the 9th of May, the 75th day of the heroic resistance of Ukrainians to Russian troops. On Ukrainian land, the occupiers brutally kill civilians and raise towns to the ground, cynically calling it a victory day. On the occupied territories of the south of Ukraine, Russians try to arrange parades to create a picture for propaganda. A crowd of people from Crimea was specially brought to Kherson for the so-called Immortal Regiment Parade. They stage a theatrical show with traditional soldiers' porridge, Russian tricolors and racist symbols. As a protest, Ukrainian patriots put up posters on the walls of houses saying they are against the occupation. In the Nergadar, Zaporizhia region, Putin's speech was broadcasted in the city center. Next to the screen, the invaders placed posters in honor of the 9th of May. But this did not cause any enthusiasm or joy among the residents of the occupied city. Hundreds of people were also taken to Melitopol from occupied Luhansk and Crimean Peninsula because the local residents continued to flee the occupation. According to the head of the city, Ivan Fedorov, a day before the occupants shelled the evacuation convoy, which was going from Melitopol to Zaporizhia through Orihiv, Zaporizhia region. On the 9th of May, Russians shelled Odessa at night. A shopping center and a warehouse with different goods caught fire. The Russians attacked with all missiles from the times of the Soviet Union. And in the afternoon, the occupants also hit five infrastructure buildings in the resort towns of the region. As a result of these attacks, one person was killed, seven people were hospitalized. It was exactly on the day that Charles Michel, the head of the European Council, came to Odessa. Попри присутність президента Європейської Ради, російські військові знову нанесли ракетний удар по Одеській області. Ось таке воно справжнє ставлення Росії до Європи, і таким воно завжди і було, щоб не говорили у Москві. Also, 15 attacks were repelled by the Ukrainian army in Donetsk and Luhansk regions during the day. This was reported by the United Forces Group. Six civilians were wounded. Slavyansk city came under fire. Congratulations on the 9th of May from the brothers. This is how the mayor Vadim Lach commented on the situation. Ukrainian defenders are trying to keep the Lysychansk Bakhmut Highway, the last route linking the occupied Luhansk region with the rest of Ukraine. If the Russians succeed in seeding the road of life, the Lysychansk Bakhmut Highway, the delivery of humanitarian aid and the evacuation of people will become impossible, Serhii Haidai, head of Luhansk Regional Military Administration. In Luhansk region, 11 people who were shot at by the Russians are trapped in the basement of a private house in Shapilova. Due to the threat of shelling, rescuers cannot provide them with assistance. Mariupol is the symbol of Ukrainians' military resistance. An immortal flame was lit in the ruined city by the occupants on the 9th of May. Putlajurgans are in the city. Immortal flame from Moscow is in place. Occupiers are in place. The collaborators are in place. The only thing missing is the people of Mariupol. Something went wrong with the holiday. Petro Andrushenka, the advisor to the mayor of Mariupol. The occupants lifted a 300-meter St. George ribbon and marched with it throughout the city, which was almost completely bombed by themselves. The participants of the march had the letter Z attached to their chests, which has become a symbol of the Russian invasion to Ukraine. Mariupol mayor Vadim Boychenko called it a coven on the bones. І їх було більше 20 тисяч. І сьогодні цими ж вулицями вони йшли, і ми чули ура! Ура чому? Ура вбитим 20 тисяч місцевим населенням. The real hell on the earth is the Azovstal plant, which the occupants continue to store mercilessly. Russians blew up the bridge which was used to evacuate Mariupol civilians. This way, the enemy is trying to cut off the Ukrainian defenders from the possibility of leaving the premises of the plant. According to the local regional administration, there are still over a hundred civilians in Azovstal. Russian occupiers continue to take the bodies of citizens to the mass grave in the village of Vinohradne, which is five kilometers from the Azovstal plant, not far from Mariupol. 
The occupants dumped the corpses of Mariupol residents who had not yet been buried in the cemetery just right in the field. The bodies laid in black plastic bags chaotically, right on the ground. The occupiers carried out a real genocide in Mariupol and killed up to 25,000 people. Kill me please, I don't want to leave, were the words of a 93-year-old Lydia from Kramatorsk in the Donetsk region. The woman told this story to volunteers when they tried to save her. It was very hard to convince my grandmother to evacuate. Lydia did not believe she deserved to be saved. She begged to be left behind or killed, so this horror would finally end. This is the third time the war has come to her home, in 2014, when Russia invaded Ukraine. And as a child, Lydia survived World War II. The woman herself is Russian, but her relatives from Russia left her many years ago. The old woman stayed alone in a small, abandoned apartment, shuddering with explosions. And now the horror is finally over for her. The woman is going to a safe place with proper care, and she is very happy about that. Lydia finally believes in people again and can feel that she is still needed. чем-то оправдывать свои действия на Украине, мы их презентовали предельно конкретно. Мы не хотим милитаризации Украины, мы не хотим сохранения тенденции к построению на Украине неонацистского государства. Когда эти боевики тренируются для осуществления террористических, по сути дела, действий, мы хотим, чтобы Украина была нейтральной, Фейками полнится эфир, вообще интернет и средства массовой информации в целом. Мы такого рода вещами не занимаемся. Это идет бой не на жизнь, а на смерть. За право России быть на политической карте мира при полном уважении своих законных интересов. Здесь никто не собирался договориться о прекращении огня. Денацификация Украины необходима, и с этим медлить нельзя. Мы никогда не хотели войны, и до сих пор войны не хотим. Мы хотим эту войну закончить.